Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Grace and welcome back to the Teach Middle East podcast. On this episode of the podcast, I'm speaking to Mark Ford and Mark is the principal at the English College Dubai and we are doing another in our series of Behind the Principal's Desk where we learn about the person in the role, what makes them tick, who are they, why did they choose to become the head of a school and also a little bit about sort of what they do when they're not sitting behind that desk. So let's welcome Mark to the podcast. Hi, everybody. It's uh, nice to be joining you this afternoon. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. We know how busy principals can get. Every time I catch up with one of them and I'm like, can I? Can we have a chat on there? Like, oh, you have to schedule it. And sometimes it's months in advance. So I do respect and appreciate the fact that you've given us some time. So I won't waste it. Mark, where are you from? Um, so originally I'm from England, um, from, from the north of England, uh, very close to York. Um, so I'm very proud to be a Yorkshireman, um, which everybody across the world knows about the famous Yorkshireman from England. Yeah, to be honest, York is my adopted home. Um, so I grew up in London and now we've actually moved to West Yorkshire. Uh, I don't, well, I live here in Abu Dhabi, but we we, we have a home in West Yorkshire. Um, and so, yeah, I can appreciate how beautiful that part of the country is. I didn't before, but it definitely is God's own country for a reason. Absolutely, Absolutely. totally agree with you. It's nice to be talking to the converted. <laughs> Yes, it, it, the weather up there is not, you know, the most favorable, but we, we, we learn to adapt. Yeah, absolutely. It's bracing, but it's healthy. Yeah. How long have you been in the UAE? Um, so on and off for about 15 years. Um, I started, started my uh, career in the UK uh, and then I had a number of uh, positions abroad. Um, we had children in France. And we then went back to UK uh, to be close to family for around nine years. Um, from there, I was in Abu Dhabi at uh, Al Kabaira for two years, um, and then returned to the Middle East for a nine-year stint, uh, and then for the third time, uh, and this is my fifth year. So that is uh, sixteen years in the Middle East altogether. This is my fifth year at the English College. Wow, your nine-year stint. Where was that? So that was at Dubai British School, um, which is one of the Talim schools. Um, but they, again, very similar school to the English College uh, in a different location, um, but a similar feel and a similar a, a similar size. Um, so lots of similarities, um, which was what attracted me to, to the role at English College. So, so take me back a little bit. What made you come out to this part of the world? I mean, France, yes, I get France, but Middle East, yeah. why? Um, a number of reasons. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating region generally, uh, and it's a wonderful hub to travel from. Um, education in the Middle East has been, uh, has been growing, um, and investment has been growing. Um, so it's, a really, it's been a really exciting uh, 10, 15 years to, to watch how the educational landscape has developed and grown and improved um, over the last 15 years. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. What have you seen? What have you noticed? Uh, more schools, <laughs> um, higher quality schools, obviously regulatory bodies and, and governments that are really committed to, to providing really high quality education. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a refreshing climate to work in. Um, so there's a real str striving for excellence um, for education across Dubai, the UAE and the Middle East generally. Uh, and it's been really exciting to be to be part of that. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people don't even understand how far we've come. When I came out here in 2010, um, I was an advisor with the Abu Dhabi Education Council and I have watched the growth mm. And it's, yeah. it's beautiful to see because for such a young country, the emphasis that's being placed on developing quality education is actually admirable. Yeah. It, you know, it's really, it's really admirable. But I want to talk about you. So what do you think 
would be a word that would best describe your personality? Gosh, um, passionate, um, enthusiastic. This is that's more than one word. Um, energetic. Uh, Go for it. Um, committed. Uh, very competitive. Highly competitive. Um, and that's manifested it in different ways uh, over the last 30 or 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess they would be the first ones. Uh, and obviously, as a principal, many of them you know, lie at the heart of how I work and uh, my kind of raison d'etre. How does your competitive side come out? Are you a sportsman? Um, because, yeah, so, well, uh, first of all, as a teacher, um, I wanted my children to, to be the best that they could be. Um, so I was quite a hard taskmaster on, on the children, but also on myself. Um, and I think as I've, uh, as I've grown as a leader, I still have that, that sense of competition that you know, the school that I'm working in, uh, I want it to be the very, very best uh, for the children uh, and for the people that work here. So that there's a less competitive, less sporting aspect um, of, of competitiveness there. Um, as a as a younger person, um, I was a highly competitive sports sportsman um, to the point where I was the John McEnroe of the tennis world. Not quite as uh, not quite as good as him, but um, I, I struggled. Uh, to, to deal with with not winning and and uh, not being the best at things, um, obviously with age um, and and some a degree of sensibility, I've uh, I've learned to to deal with my expectations of myself. Um, but I've always been competitive. It, initially, as a sports person, as a musician, uh, I wanted to be a, a rock star, uh, but realised pretty quickly that uh, that just wasn't going to happen. Um, but I guess education has been, been the place where I've always felt that I can excel, I can be competitive, um, and I can actually realistically make a difference. I'm sure I would have done as a rock guitarist, and that just didn't happen, I'm afraid. You've painted a crazy picture in my head. You said John <laughs> McEnroe, you said guitarist, rock, and I'm thinking... It shows my age, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. But but you know what it made me think of? What kind of tantrums would you would you throw when you lost? Well, I'm glad that uh, the, the children in my school didn't see me as a youngster because uh, some of my behaviour was properly pro properly uh, colourful. I would imagine. Um, I think cricket bats were thrown, tennis rackets were thrown, uh, squash rackets were smashed against the wall. Um, and probably occasionally the language was 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 not fitting for a principal, uh, but obviously that's uh, that's youth and you learn and you move on. Yeah, but this this the whole essence of this interview is like we want to know Mark, so we want to like <laughs> conjure up that yeah. picture of you like smashing yeah. tennis rackets yeah. and breaking yeah. guitars and being the rock star that you are. <laughs> we love it. That's exactly yeah. what this is about. You mentioned family, yeah. wife, children. What what what's yeah. family like? So, I have uh, a wife and two amazing children. Um, they're obviously the center of my universe. Um, I say children. Uh, my son is 32 and my daughter is 29. Uh, and I'm actually a grandfather as well. Uh, so I have one grandchild and the second one on the way. Um, and obviously family for me, it always has been. Um, it, it, with my own parents and my own brothers, uh, family has always been really, really central. Um, and uh, yeah, it's something that that's really you know probably one of the most important things in my life. Probably the most important thing, actually. Yeah. How, what do you do to connect and ensure that you have that quality time with your family? What yeah, do you do? It's, that's a good question. Obviously, we're uh, in different parts of the universe um, or, or the planet. So my daughter lives in UK, um, and my son in Norway. Um, so we spend a lot of time um, meeting actually in France. So uh, have a house in France, and that that's our focal point now. Um, and we try to get together as often as we can. Um, and they, I see as much of them in Dubai as I possibly can. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we we make as many opportunities as we can, given that we've got busy lives in different parts of parts of the world. What's the favourite thing you love to play with the grandkid? 
Uh, oh gosh, that's a good question. She's only really got to the age where I can start playing with her. So uh, I like playing hide and seek. Mm. Um, she's at a she's at an age now where she understands what that means, and she's so cute. She hides behind curtains, oh. uh, and I'll say, "Where is she? Is she behind the? Is she in the bath?" And I'll hear this little voice from the behind the curtain saying, "No." <laughs> uh, is she in the cupboard? No. Nope. And then eventually uh, I, I, I discover she's behind the curtain, much to her hilarity. Um, so, yeah, it's a lovely age, but I just love being with her. She's such good company. Um, it's a very unusual feeling to have grandchildren. Obviously, they are genetically connected, but they're not your children. But they're still a very special bond and relationship. Um, and uh, I have to say, I was completely taken aback uh, by how madly in love um, I fell with my granddaughter. I knew it would be a, obviously it would be an amazing feeling, um, but I never quite expected it to be as powerful as it has been. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I watch. I you know watched my my parents before they passed with my my kids, and there were nothing like that with me. Were you stricter mm -hmm. with your your kids than you are with your little um, granddaughter? That's a really good question. So with my son, I was incredibly strict, and. I, I think reflecting, and we often have conversations about this, so he's very good natured about it. But I'm a mathematician, um, and I've always been passionate about maths and science. My son is similar, um, and I think as a father, I tended to be more pushy with him than perhaps I should have been. Um, it was meant, obviously, in a very supportive and caring way, but I think, uh, yeah, I was probably more more pushy than I should have been. Um, whereas with my daughter, it was very laissez-faire and uh, yeah, very much left her to her own way. Um, she, yeah, there's a, again, there's, a, there's a, a special relationship between father and daughter. Um, so she's always been uh, the, uh, the, the spoiled one in the family. But I love them both equally, obviously. And uh, yeah, I, I'll do anything I can for either of them and uh, yeah. They're the, they're the center of my universe. I, 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 I can see that on your face when you're talking about them, that you really do love yeah. love your kids. How about um, spending time with your, your partner, your wife? What do you guys yeah. do here in, in the UAE when you want to chill? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite challenging in the UAE because we're very outdoory. Um, so typically in France, um, lots of mountain biking, uh, lots of walking in the hills, um, lots of outdoor, outdoor, outdoor uh, exercise. Um, enjoy going to the beach here um, occasionally. Um, enjoy eating out, uh, both lovers of food um, and, and nice uh, cuisines from around the world. Um, I love watching good films, love watching uh, good tv not any old tv so quite selective we're both selective in that sense uh, but good films um we live a quite a secluded social life um but um yeah films music uh cinema um in dubai seems to be our our main source of entertainment whereas back in europe it's very much more outdoorsy yeah what's your favorite cuisine Oh, good question. Um, I think probably Indian. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, really getting the hang of how to cook really high quality curries now. It's been a, a, a long, long time in coming, but I think I'm at the point now where I can cook a pretty authentic curry. Um, I like uh, French cuisine, of course. Um, I think that's hard to beat. Sport for choice. I think probably Indian and French equally. Um, I like Italian from time to time, I like Japanese, you know, Korean. Yeah, again, I can't name just one, I don't think. You like quite a bit of them. But yeah. you, you mentioned earlier about the fact that how central Dubai is for travel. So apart yeah. from going back to your home in France, where mm. where do you travel to? And what do you enjoy when you go on your travels? Mm. Uh, I guess for me, meeting the people, meeting people and different different people, uh, from different backgrounds um, is, is probably one of the most enriching parts of the experience. Um, so, gosh, I guess 
the longer we've been here, the less frequently we travel, but pretty much seen most of the, well, most, um, Jordan, Egypt, uh, India several times, and Sri Lanka, uh, Africa, different parts of Africa. Um, so I've been really lucky to see some amazing places and to meet some amazing people that I still, yeah, still keep in touch with. Yeah, if 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 you if you had one country to add to your wish list, what would it be and why? Like where in oh, the world would you want okay. to go? Okay, so my favorite place would always be Kenya. Um because that is really special. Um on my bucket list, I still have South America. I'd like to see Bolivia. Uh I think probably top of my bucket list would be Namibia. Um so I'd like to I'd like to spend a few weeks uh, traveling uh, the length and breadth of Namibia, which is meant to be a pretty spectacular country. Why Namibia? What, what's what's the draw? I think uh, the people. Um, uh, I think the uh, the geography and the scenery is meant to be quite spectacular. It's quite diverse, uh, from beaches through to desert, through to national parks. Um, I love deserts. I think uh, yeah, the, the desert landscape is. Uh, is one of my favourite landscapes. Um, but put that next to the coast. Uh, spectacular wildlife in Namibia as well. Um, the Atosha Pan in the north is meant to be a fascinating reserve for wildlife that's found in the desert, even lions. Um, so I think Namibia, Namibia is, and the food, of course. Um, so I think there's a lot of things that would draw me to, to Namibia. All right. Okay. I've been to the border of Namibia. I didn't go across, but um, I'll, I'll encourage you to add Zambia to your list. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Botswana, actually. I'd like oh. to. Botswana is meant to be good. I've been. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely stunning place and very good for safari if you yeah. ever are into into yeah. going for safari. Hopefully one day, hopefully one day. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's change the pace a bit. Um, and I would like to kind of dig a little bit deeper into you as a person, what do you do to relax, especially after a busy day in the office? Because we know what principles lives are like. What do you do to... Yeah, um, I try to run. So I used to be a, a very seasoned runner. Um, I used to do a lot of competition running uh, when I was a bit younger, um, but I still try to run at least every other day. Um, so for varied, varied distances, whether that's in the gym on the machine during the hot season um, or whether it's down on the beach. Um, so I try to knock out a few kilometers uh, every week. Um, I enjoy, I mentioned before, I enjoy music. I'm a passionate uh, uh, musician in the sense of listening to it now more than playing um, again I enjoy good films I enjoy reading um, I'm currently reading uh, How to Murder Your Family which is a, a great read if you haven't read it sounds a bit ominous but uh, it's a great book um, so yeah read it, reading reading a range of literature fairly eclectic taste both in my music and in my literature actually yeah, no, reading is good. What advice would you give like to other school leaders who are finding it really hard to switch off after mm. work? Yeah, I think uh, I think exercise and taking regular exercise is probably the most important thing to do. Um, the, the, there's a lot of research that shows the, you know, the, the positive benefits on mental health of taking regular exercise, apart from the obvious um, cardiac and, uh, and and other aspects of, of exercise. So I think regular exercise is really important for managing stress levels. Um, I don't talk about work at all when I go home. So I think trying to uh, trying to establish a climate where it's not heavily about work and it's just completely different conversation is really important. Um, and again, having yeah, having routines so, so reading for certain amount of time every night um just, yeah just really switching off and try trying to have that uh, respite between getting away from work and and then your next stint the following day yeah and for any new aspiring school leader that's listening to this mm -hmm. um, they're coming into the role with all luster and gusto 
how how would you or what would you say to them to help them to make sure that when they get into that role they don't just burn out and fizzle yeah i think be realistic um take your time to settle into the role and to understand um what it is that you, you're taking on um understand what you like and what you want to keep in terms of the school uh, its character its personality uh, and, it, and its positive aspects um take time to identify uh, what you think needs to change uh, build relationships make sure that when you do identify what you need to change uh, that you've got the relationships there to uh, to get buy-in from people um, and to get that uh, to get that um, momentum that's needed to make things change um, and don't try try to do too much too quickly and make sure that you you have a very measured approach and that you you have a a realistic expectation of, of what you can achieve over any given time right yeah what's next for you um i still love doing what i'm doing um so yeah i'm a funny principal because uh, i still love mathematics i still love being in the classroom so i try to get into classes as much as i can uh, especially mathematics classes, which is obviously a real bane for the maths department here because you can imagine the principal sticking his nose into your maths lessons, probably not the most relaxing of uh, things to happen. Uh, but I hope they know that it's with good intent and it's because you know, I enjoy it and I love I love seeing children learn mathematics and I love seeing teachers teach it really well. Um, so I enjoy that. Uh, I'm really interested by leadership. Um, obviously, I've been really fortunate to have a number of different leadership experiences um, in different roles, most recently, obviously, as a principal. Um, and I'm fascinate, fascinated by leadership. So perhaps um, something uh, in terms of helping people develop as leaders, um, develop leadership across schools, across organisations. Um, but it's something that's yeah, become more and more of an interest to me as I've spent more and more time in schools. Brilliant. Uh, before we end, I, I, let, let, I, I'm, I'm going to break my rule a little bit before we end and ask you a little bit about your school. I have not myself been to the English College. I've been in this role since 2018 as editorial director of Teach Middle East, and I've managed to go to pretty much um, a lot of the schools, but I haven't been to yours. So what makes okay. it unique? What, what's, what's so great about the English College? Well, I guess uh, you have to come and see really. So um, we need to find a, a time when you can come and uh, have, a, have a walk around with us. Um, obviously I'm biased. So as every principal will say, uh, it is the best school I've worked in. Um, what makes it special? There's a number of things, really. Uh, first of all, we have amazing children. Um, everybody that walks into the school uh, talks about how calm the school is, how confident, um, but without being arrogant, the children are. Um, they're well-mannered, they're articulate, uh, they're polite. Um, they want to learn, um, which is obviously a lovely position to be in. Uh, but they're really grateful for everything that the the teachers do. Um, I always tell people the story when I first arrived at EC, um, and I was stood outside on the gate, and uh, the security team obviously helped guide children across the school on the zebra crossing. Um, and uh, I remember on my first morning, all of the children as they came across the crossing said thank you to the security guard, um, and they they said. Uh, things like, uh, have a great day, thank you very much, see you this evening, thank you very much. And I was just absolutely staggered by, I mean, that's how life should be, isn't it? Yeah. That's how life should be. But uh, I was just so impressed with the fact that you know, the children appreciated and were grateful for what they have. Um, and they showed that massive respect for, for everybody that's, that's, that's here to make their life better, no matter whether you were a class teacher, uh, members of the security team, cleaner, um, the respect that they show for others uh, was just hugely impressive. And we've got a wonderful bunch of teachers, 
Uh, they do a phenomenal job. They work incredibly hard. Um, and there's a real sense of community. So put all of those three things together um, and you get a really special community. Um, and it's palpable. As soon as you come into the school and visitors comment on it all the time, you will when you come and see us. Um, you really feel that, that very special sense of community um, that you can only really experience by, by coming and having a look around. Brilliant. I think I'll pay you a visit. On that note, I, I will. Look forward to it. Look Thank forward you. To it. Thank you for being on the podcast, Mark. It's a pleasure. Thanks for your time.